Hi. Hello. Uh -huh. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon, Hello. <laughs> We have no rest at morning class, afternoon class. When can we do our work? Hi, May. Hi. <laughs> who, who is behind you? <laughs> we have another student behind me. <coughs> oh, good morning, good sir. Good are, good are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Them, are you in the Quincy office or some other way, some other place? This is my house. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, there, in that sir house, there is a large uh, library room. Reading room, reading room. Yeah, it's nice. A, yeah. So if it is not pandemic, you have to go to uh, Quincy College, right? Um, say that again. Uh, if it is not the situation now. Yeah, we don't have any classes at Quincy College right now. Yeah, uh, no, before, before we have before, to- Before, uh, we, everything was at Quincy College, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, Massachusetts, uh, uh, <laughs> There have a new rule that uh, who take COVID vaccine, uh, he need not he uh, any mask. Yeah, yeah, they've. Uh, that's mm. right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's not yet though, right? That's uh, starts on <clears throat> the 29th, uh, uh, May 29. Is that right? I'm not sure. But also railway buses and uh, gathering places um, must be need mask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Professor Banjo is trying to connect. Yeah. But <laughs> so far, we don't know. I have a question for them. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hey. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wow, that's you. That's a that's a living human yes, being. Yes, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am here, Sam. I went to get I went to get my um my camera. Oh, okay. Right, so I could see you and you could see me. So this is me. Well, you look good to me. All right. Oh, uh, well, you look good to me, too. All right. So what, I'm sorry, what, who was asking? Jing, uh, Ling, you have a question or somebody yeah, else? Yeah, no, never mind. I just okay. want to know you, why you can speak in Chinese. Why, why what? You can speak in Chinese. Oh, uh, I'll tell you later. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. All right, welcome, everybody. Um, all right. So, uh, what's Andrewman? So, Andrewman, your audio goes very bad after like half an hour. Yeah. So, right now, your audio is good. When you talk right now, it's good. But after some time, it goes really, really bad. So, I just thought I'll tell you now since your audio is good right now. 
So uh, what, what's going on? Uh, I think uh, my internet uh, uh, level is low in our house. Uh, I oh. think it. Uh, mm, I try to uh, change it. I'm trying to change it. Okay. Now, okay. Can hear me? now you can hear me well. Yeah, it's 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 kind of okay right now, but later it starts getting really bad, and we can't really hear anything. All right. Okay. So, what, does it help if does it help if she uh, shuts down and then comes back? Would that help? I don't know. Maybe. I think I, we could. I, I mean, I try that in my class sometimes with her, yes. and uh, it seems to okay. be a little bit better. So maybe that's what you need to do sometimes. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to chapter, well, we're going to continue, right? Where did we stop? Anybody remembers? Where did we get to in chapter two? Thunderbolt. Chapter two. Thunderbolt, uh, VGA. Through Thunderbolt, VGA. okay. Yes. All right, so, yeah, that's a good point. So let's see. These are over. Yeah, so we, we looked at all this part here. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, I think it was external, oh, we're talking about external storage already. All right, so I think we're in hard, oh, we'll talk about hard drives too. Oh, I think maybe hard drives is where we're at. Okay, hard drives. Okay, let's just kind of start again from flash drives. Okay. Uh, just give me one second here. Okay, so I want to show us, um, let's see if you guys can see, I want to do a demonstration here and show you a few things. So let me see if I can get it up here. Uh, are you guys, let me see, let me, let me stop sharing for one second. Oh, let's go hide this. Okay, uh, you guys are not seeing this, right? Can you guys see? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is, uh, one second here. Let me just do speak of you. All right, so this is the, uh, this is a hard drive, right? Uh, let me see. 
Uh, just give me one second here. I want to get a better view. Okay, you know what? I'm going to come back to this in one second. Let's just continue. Let's, let's keep going. I'll show, I just want to show us, you know, the actual things we're talking about here. Okay. So flash drives, right? Uh, we talk about flash drives, you know, having different sizes um, of contents that you can save in the flash drive. So this is all on the external storage, right? External storage is whatever you can attach to the computer, right? Whatever you can attach to the computer. So uh, when you look at this, uh, when you look at this case here. There's some things that are, you know, part of the computer. So in here, you can recognize um, like some of the the PCI slots, right? You can see the memory. You see the memory. You see the motherboard. <clears throat> yeah, but it's too small. You guys see it? It's too small. Oh, it's too small, right? Okay, so if you can, what's the uh, best way here? So if you you the last time uh, just a minute ago it was uh full screen i don't know why uh okay so let's see full okay yeah, let's do full screen share, so i think stop sharing i think it'd be all right okay all right so stop sharing right yeah so then okay I'm in, so, so is it better I'm this way speaker view i'm in speaker view or whatever and i can see the whole thing yeah okay fine can you guys all see the whole thing ling you can see the whole thing right yeah i know all right, so you can recognize, let me get a pen here. Okay, so in here, you can recognize a few things. Let me turn this properly here uh, so we can see. All right, so in here, in here is your what? That's your memory stick here, right? In here. Yeah, it's RAM. That's your RAM exactly. Let me just pop it out. That's the RAM. Couch. That's the RAM. All right, so that goes in that slot over there. I'm just gonna put this down here. So there's some things that are part of this, uh, that part of this, shall I say, this computer. They're built in. You can't, some things you can take out, some things are part of it. Right now, when we look at the back, when we look at the back here, right, it has all your, it has all your connections, right? It has all your connections here. That's um, your USBs, different, different connections here, right? Okay. So let's see some things here. So let's go back to the share, so we can see the book. All right, so the flash drive is one of the external um, connections on your computer. You can plug it in or take it out, all right? Same, same thing with memory cards. You can plug them in um, or take them out, memory cards. Okay. And then you have, um, you know, different types of memory cards, memory cards, uh, different sizes. Uh, these are pictures of those different sizes that you have. <clears throat> All right. So that's about hard drives, right? Your external hard drive is like your internal hard drive. So here is the, let me stop sharing again. So here is, um, Here's the hard drive right here. This is the hard drive. This is your C drive. You see, on your computer, you have a C drive where you save all your files. That is, in, if you open the computer, uh, I think I can pull this out. Let me see if I can pull this out for you guys. It's a bit hard to pull out. Let me see if I can get it out and show you. Let's 
not the easiest to come out. Well, it's pretty hard to to bring it out, but it's in there anyway. That's it. That's it right there. And that's where you save your um, all your stuff on your C drive, on the hard drive. All right. Then you have external hard drives that are like you know they're like big flash cards. You can connect it to your computer, right? Like flash drives. So they're called external hard drives. They're much bigger uh, than a regular flash drive. They have more capacity than a regular flash drive. Okay. So this is the case. Well, this is what most people call a computer. This is the computer case. All right. This is the computer case right here. Just like what I showed you. Um, the computer case. Just like, you know, my box here. Okay, let me put this down here. All right, let's keep going. So your external hard drives, uh, here's an example. Let me get a picture here. Maybe this is better. External hard drive. All right. So you have all kinds of external hard drives. Here's an example of an external hard drive that you might have at home, right? You can just connect it with a with a cable to your computer. So it's an extra hard drive compared to what you have on your screen, on your inside your computer, right? An external hard drive. They're different sizes, you know, different sizes, different capacitors, and they have different cables, right? Different cables that you can use to connect them, these different connectors. So uh, this one here looks like a little bit different connector. Uh, this one here is a little bit different, uh, the connector here. All right. So it says right here um, that, let me get this out of the way. highlight okay so it says right here that the external hard drive has a few connectors usb firewire e-sata thunderbolt connectors these are the kind of questions you might get you know in the exam usb firewire e-sata thunderbolt connectors okay Let's keep going. You also have external optical drives, right? It's kind of like similar to this one here, external optical drives, just like that. So you have your, uh, like your CDs, right? Anjuman asked about that the other day, I think. So you can connect them externally, right? Externally to uh, something like this. So externally to your computer. So not the one that is inbuilt. So you have some that are inbuilt in the computer, but external, when you say external drive, it means you can connect it and disconnect it, right? You connect it to your computer, you can take it out. It's movable, you can move it around. So we have external optical drives uh, for your CDs, for your DVDs, uh, stuff like that. All right. Now we also have, uh, network attached storage, right? So, Kaush, uh, when you talk about a network, what, do you know what, what's a network? When you say you attach something to it, right there it says attached to a network. Yes. What does that mean? Connect with other computers, like make a contact with other connection with the other computers or internet, like Okay. okay, so when, well, let's try again. Let's try, Anu, Anu let's try, maybe you have a different uh, explanation. What What's a, a network? What do we mean by a network? Network means there's a connection with other computers, like other yeah, I do have the same okay. idea as Kaush. Network means uh, is the, it's a connection of uh, connection with connect connection with other computers. 
the connection with other computers through the what? Through, through the what, yeah. Internet? Through the internet. Yeah. Through internet. So, yeah. So when you have, when you are, yeah, when you are connected to a network, basically we think about connections with other computers through the internet or through the internet or through using cables, right? For example, if you connect a device to your computer directly, that's a local connection, right? That's a local connection, local connection, right? If, if a device is connected to your computer directly, but if your computer, but if your files, if your files are on an, on a different, let's say on a different computer, and you need a cable or the internet to get to those files, then you might say it's on a network, not on your, on your particular computer. So networking is being able to access other files and programs that may not necessarily be on your own computer. Right, so you can say that you are network. It's like if you go on social media networks, you're trying to meet other people who you don't know, maybe, right? So that's social media networking, social networking. So in terms of computer networking, you're trying to access files that are not on your own computer. For example, let's look at it as an example here. Um, do you guys? You guys watch Netflix? Anybody has a Netflix account? Yes. Alex, you have a Netflix account? No. Okay, but have you watched Netflix? Yeah, uh, like some years ago. <laughs> like years ago? Okay, anybody watch Netflix like last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so Ling has watched Netflix. Okay, so you go on Netflix, for example, if I go to Netflix here, my account. Now, Ling, question for you. All these movies on Netflix, are they on my computer? No. No? Why, Where are they? Why on, the, why on your computer? Just all in the app, uh, apps. Okay. So all these movies are saved Oh, they are you, on Netflix it, computer. Yeah. yeah, if you save it, that's on your computer. Yeah, of course. If I save it, I can download it, right? But if I don't download it, I can still watch it. But all these movies are on Netflix server. So I can get to Netflix because I'm on the network, right? Yeah. Because I'm on the internet. I'm on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if your computer is connected to another computer... Wires, wirelessly or using a wire, then you say you are networking with somebody else. You're getting files from another computer and you can access those files on your own computer. So any file that is on your computer is a local file. For example, Ling, if I go to you, can I get a file from your computer right now? It's impossible. The only way I can get your file or your computer is if you send it to me. But if my computer is connected to your computer, then I can get files from your computer and we can share, we can network. All right? So the idea of networking is that you are connected to another computer and you and that computer can share files back and forth. That is networking. Just like when you try to make, you know, you try to make new friends or, you know, you know, some kind of a, you know, um, professional network so that you can meet people and probably help you with a job. You're trying to expand the people you know, networking. They have something that you need. Maybe you can get some of that connection from them. So networking with computers, it's about being attached to another computer so you can access files there. Those files may not be on your own computer. So just like Netflix, right? It's an idea, it's, a, it's maybe an example of networking. If you work in an office, in a company, right? So let's say, 
in an office setting. All right, so here's an example, right? So this guy's here, might be doing all their work. Now, all the files that they need to work may not be on their computers, right, Arch? The files might be maybe in the computer room, and all they need to do is log in, and they can access those files, right? So you can work on your computer um, and be networked. So all the people in this office might be all networked. They are all connected together so they can share files with each other, networking. So when you think about networking, you're connected to other computers and you can share and manage files with other people or other computers. All right, so it's, important, it's an important idea. So right here, this, this um, network attached storage, it means that you can store your files on an external device that may not be connected to your, in fact, it is not connected to your computer. It is on a separate device. It is because you're part of the network that you can store your files. It's kind of like how you can store files on Google Drive or you can store files, um, you know, OneDrive, Dropbox. It's an external storage. May you understand that? It's an external storage. So is it a right. the cable? Yeah. Router or modem? Is it router or modem? Router? Oh, of course. I mean, of course, if you're going to be on the network, you have a, you have a router at home. I mean, of course, right? Everybody has a router at home. That's how, that's how you're part of Zoom. If you have no router, you can't even join this Zoom session, right? But we're not talking about a router now. Now we're talking about a device where you store your files, right? So this is an example of a device. It's called a network storage um, where you can save files that are part of a network. And what happens is, uh, that file, those files are not on your computer. Like I said, they're not on your computer on an external device. Okay. So even if you shut down your computer, was that your question? Is that pin drive, sir? Say that again? Is that uh, the device is pin drive? I'm not getting what you're saying. Uh, I'm beside. Pin, pin drive, pin drive. He's saying the thumb drive? Pen drive, pen drives, pen drives, external uh, data collect, uh, data uh, pen drives. <clears throat> uh, I'm not getting what you guys are saying. Can you spell it? Yes. Uh, yeah, he, spell it. Uh, I share it. Pen drives, P and and yes, B R I B S. It's a. Uh, um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not understanding. Uh, I, I think I get. I get what they are saying. Oh, Maybe in drives. Bangladesh, uh, they call pen the drive. flash drives as uh, pen drives. Yes. Uh, we have oh, the, oh, 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 a pen drive. In, uh, Brazil, yeah. Uh, people in like Brazil. like. Like right. this here? That's pen, yeah, those yeah. are pen drives in Brazil. Like drive. Oh my God. Too. I didn't know that. Oh, well, a pen drive a or a flash of, drive. Uh, here, yeah, uh, here when I try to find the flash drives, I always ask, oh, uh, can I buy a pen drive? They look at me uh, like, what is that? So this is how I found out that there's <laughs> no pen drive here. Okay, so... The flash drive or pen drive, that's a totally different. A flash drive or a pen drive, you connect it to your own computer directly. Right? That's not what we're talking about now. An external drive, right, is not connected to your computer. Now, you might have a cable. So I'm going to show you guys this. Uh, let, me, let me stop sharing again for a second here so I can show you the cable. Okay. All right, so right here is a 
here is a cable here. You guys have you guys have these cables, right? Yes. You have the cables? You just plug you plug in the cables right there. Yeah. Um, uh, Ling, what is this part? This part, what is it called? This part here. Oh. This part, uh, you know? Plug in the computer. Uh, can we say that it's what's the, Alex? What's Alex? the name? What's the Alex. what's the name of this part? The name. Female part. Molex. Molex. Male and maybe female. Male and female. Yeah, I have no idea. I, no. I think oh Molex. no. <laughs> this. Okay. What is this? What is this cable used for? Network. What's it used for? Network Game cable. Network. <laughs> yeah, that's your network cable. Right. This is not your. This is not your monitor cable. This is not your VGA. So, Anjuman, this is yes, not your yes. VGA cable that is used for your monitor. Yes. This is for your modem, right? For the internet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, like, so the question you're asking, you need a cable like this mm -hmm. uh, if you want to network with another computer or with an external drive, many times you have a cable like that that is connected from your computer to another device using a cable like this. So this kind of cable is used in networking a lot. You can use this cable to connect two computers. If you have two computers, you can connect two cables. Uh, you can... For example, uh, right here, once I plug it in here, right, and I plug the other side into another computer, I can share files with that computer, right? You don't even need any internet. If you have two computers, just use a cable like this and connect to another computer. You can share files with that computer without the internet. You and that file, you and that other computer can share, right? Is, is there any name for that um, cable? Oh, yeah. You have to pay me a hundred bucks to tell you the name. <laughs> can I try to guess? You can guess. Coax cable? Mm. No way! <laughs> this is not a coax cable. A coax cable is what you use for actual, behind your TV. That's an actual coax cable. Behind your TV, it has a little screw, you can screw it on. It's round, right? right? This here is basically an inter what? Ethernet cable. Internet. Ethernet. Internet. Let me share my screen. Uh, Ethernet cable. So, Ethernet. E-T-H-E-R-N-E-T. -E 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 Ethernet. 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 Ethernet, not Ethernet. Ethernet. Not internet, Ethernet. So let me show you where you, you have your Ethernet on your computer. Go to your control panel. Do a search for your control panel. This is really important for IT people. Go to your control panel, and then right here you're going to see network and internet. You see this blue link here, view network status and tax. So click here and it's gonna bring you to this page. Do you see this screen here? Yeah. Do you see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what you get here, uh, on the left side you should see change adapter settings, right here, adapter settings. So click on that and it's gonna bring you to this screen here, right? So this screen here, for example, if I take out, right now my computer is connected to my modem, right? If I take out the cable, you're going to see an X right here. And then I'm going to be disconnected from you guys, <laughs> right? So I don't want to do that. So this is your Ethernet. The Ethernet is how you're able to connect to the Internet, the Ethernet is how you are able to do any kind of networking. The Ethernet. 
right? The Ethernet, not Internet. The Internet is all the computers around the world all connected together. So right now, Ling, Alex, Sam, you guys are all here because of the Internet. So here is a little description for you guys. The Internet is like all the streets and all the roads in town. You can get to one place, you can get from, you can get anywhere, just get on the road, right? All the roads mostly connect to everybody. So that's like the internet. It's like the computers that we use. They're all connected with wires, right? All computers around the world, everyone is connected with wires. So anything you do actually on the internet, um, you you leave what you call a trace, you know, because your computer, your computer has, let me show you guys. Um, I wasn't going to go here, but let me just show you guys. So if you go to your computer, actually I went too fast. So do a search for command prompt on your computer, command prompt. Go to your command prompt, command prompt. And your command prompt is like a black box. Uh, type, type this word, type IP config. Type this here in your command prompt. IP config. IP config. You got it? <clears throat> Pull up your command prompt and type IP config. Is that one word or uh... One word, one word, IP config. IT, I, IP or IT? IP, IP, IP P, P for Peter. IP. P for Peter. Okay, you guys, I don't see that. Let me, let, let me, let me increase the uh, font size here. Okay, can you see now? Do you see it, IP config? Yes. Okay, so when you type IP config, click enter, hit enter on your keyboard. It's gonna show you a whole bunch of information, but what we're looking for is the first part. So look for something uh, that is called IPv4 address, IPv4. May, do you see, uh, do you see that? No. What do you mean no? Did you check it? Did you search for your command prompt? Because uh, I, I don't use the Windows computer. Oh, oh man. Windows. This class is a Windows class. I keep telling you guys. I know. I tried to get that one. I need to set up. So. Uh, maybe next when you class, go and do the exam, all the questions on the exam are all based on Windows computers. So using a Mac, um, using a Mac is not going to help you with the with the uh, with the exam or even with this class because everything is based on Windows. Okay, uh, Couch, did you see this on yours? No. Couch, I didn't hear you. Uh, not yet. Um, I'm opening. Yeah, I could see. Uh, I, I, I could see, see Benjo. I need you. I need you guys. Listen, I need you guys to to do what we're doing here, right? Don't just watch. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I need you to do what we're doing here, right? This is not a movie. This is not a Netflix movie. Right? I need you to do what we're doing here. That's how you know what we're doing. All right? Um, one day you might the... end up in an office. Okay, so who got this? I know you got this. I got, yeah, I got it. Okay, so... IPv4, so basically, just to keep it short, every computer, right, every computer has a unique IPv4 address. Every computer, every device that gets on the internet, your laptop, your tablet, your phone, your computer, all, every device that can get on the internet has a unique IP address. That is, it's kind of like your house address, actually, right? Your house address 
That is how we, come to, we can come to your house. We can send a package to your house. You can send a package to another house based on the house address. So your IPv4 is your computer address. Every time you do anything on your computer, your computer is sending messages including that IP address. So this is, this is like networking. That's why I suggested to you guys the last class that when we're done with this program, it's a good idea to do some more programs at the college so you get some more knowledge, right? We can only do so much here, uh, but you get some deeper knowledge on some of these things if you go to college, right? Do some extra courses or certificates. So your IPv4 address basically is a unique ID for your computer. Every time your computer does anything, that IP is attached to every single action. That is how you can send emails, you can go on Netflix, you can go on Gmail. That address is unique to your computer. Very important, right? So the whole idea of networking uh, it, it happens because your computer has some abilities to identify itself, right? When you're, uh, let's go here. Uh, Benjo, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, how is that number uh, like uh, set? Uh, uh, how do uh, how does everybody know that nobody has the same number as my computer? Does everybody know? No, no, I mean, uh, how is that number set so that uh, they know that uh, no number is uh, the same, like no one else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is, all, it is set. Okay, so how do you have internet in your house, um, Alex? Well, who's your provider? Um the name of it i i don't remember the name but uh alex your yeah, provider is either netflix or comcast or comcast right uh xfinity is a provider i don't know. xfinity yeah, yeah xfinity, xfinity, xfinity is comcast xfinity. Right. so you have yeah. xfinity comcast or verizon um uh files right so alex you have xfinity right Right. Okay. Uh, Kaush, what do you have? Xfinity. Xfinity. What? Xfinity. Xfinity. May, what do you have? Samsung. It's uh, Comcast. Samsung? No, Comcast. Oh, I thought you said Samsung. I was going to say Samsung is your phone, not your <laughs> internet provider. <laughs> okay. So... Now, to Alex's question, the providers, Verizon and, Verizon and Comcast, right? Uh, this is a very deep topic. I can't go into all the details, but basically, Verizon and Comcast, they have a bunch of IP addresses that are automatically assigned whenever you join their network. It's like when you go to school, you get an, a student ID, right? Because you're a student in that school, you get a student ID automatically. Everything you do in the school, you, you have that ID with you. So when you join Comcast or Xfinity or Verizon Files, you get your computer. If you have a computer, a laptop, a tablet, every device you have has a unique IP coming from your provider. So that is the system. Every device has to be unique so that we can identify when your computer is sending messages, we can get it back and forth, back and forth, just like your house address. Just like a car, right? Every car has a unique license plate, right? Every person in the United States, um, when you're born, you have a social security number. It makes you unique, right? Um, if you have a driver's license, your driver's license has a unique number. It makes you unique. Link. If you're on the highway and you're driving at 100 miles per hour, well, the police is going to stop you and say, show me your license. And they're going to say, speeding fine, $250.
Don't say that. <laughs> right? Yeah. So because be, yeah. because you see, you might have you might have a lot of people who bear your same name, right? But your I, your driver's license number is unique to you. Even if you have a thousand people that are exactly your name, there's an ID for you that is unique. So that's how the internet works, right? You might have a lot of people living in your house. But every time you get on your computer or your laptop or your device, that device sending messages has a unique IP address. That's how it works. It comes from your provider. If you want to know more about this topic, see me privately where you pay me 250 per hour. <laughs> okay, just kidding. So do you understand, Alex? Kind of makes sense? Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Uh, the only part that I don't uh, quite understand or maybe uh, is that number uh, worldwide or just local? Like, uh, is it just for the U.S. or maybe if you go to uh, other uh, country, uh, will I have uh, they have another set of numbers just for that country or is it worldwide? OK, so let me ask you a question, Alex. Can you travel from the U.S. to Brazil? Yeah. Can you go from Brazil to Africa? Uh, maybe some of uh, some uh, countries. Connections. Yeah. Connections, right? You have to connect. But you can get there, right? You can travel anywhere you want to travel. Right. Okay. Now, every time you get to immigration, right, they check, right, they say, Alex, are you on the wanted on the wanted list of criminals? No. Okay. Boom. You can go. <laughs> right. So so it's a worldwide system, right? It's a worldwide system. Believe it or not, it's a worldwide system. So if you're in Brazil, if you're in Bangladesh, if you're in China, if you're in South Africa, if you're in England, wherever you are, the system of the internet right requires that your provider so in, in in india or in in bangladesh or in china your provider will be is not comcast right you don't have a comcast you don't have verizon you might have a different company with a different name well they operate with the same principles right so some things are agreed kind of like it's a worldwide agreement that is how telecommunications work. Telecommunications and the internet, it works in an agreed fashion. So anyone who is joining, right, anyone who is joining the internet has to operate under those rules. So if you're in Brazil, or if you're in Africa, you're in Morocco, go to your computer, do your, look for your IP address, it's going to be a unique IP address to your computer. So wherever you are, if you have the right tools, right? The truth is, if you have the right tools, wherever you are, you can't really, you can't hide. You can try to hide your internet activities, but with the right tools, we can find out where you are and where you are sending that information from. It might take a while, but we can find it ultimately. Not, that, not everybody, you need the right tools or the right government permissions to do that. Because every IP address, right, is actually attached to a physical location. Let me show you, for example, if you go to your computer and you say, what is my IP, right? Now, watch this. It's going to tell me if I go to, if I go here, all right, uh, where is it? IP address lookup. All right, so let me get my IP address here uh, for my command prompt. My IP address, I think that was it. I think my IP address is, this, this is six. Mm -hmm. IPv4, um, I 
just want to get the location for you. Let me get another one here. There are a few options you can use. Not this one. Okay, let's see this one. It's taken a while. Seems to, this website doesn't seem to work. Let's try again. Basically, the idea is that, uh, you know, every IP, right, every IP address is attached to a physical geographical location, right? So if you have, like, what's, what is my IP address, if you know any IP, okay, for example, uh, Alex, could you give me your IP that you see on your computer? You can see that my, my, my IP it tells you where I live. I live in Watertown. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not going to tell you my address, like in my street number, but it's going to give you an idea of my zip code. Your IP is attached to a, a zip code or, you know, a geographical location. So let me put your IP here. Uh, Alex, what's your IP? Okay. Uh, I, I can paste it on the chat. So it can yeah, be just, just, call it, just call it out. Uh, there you go. You want you want me to spell? Uh, yeah, just call it up. Just say that. Just say that. Okay. Uh, two six zero oh, one. Two six one dot. Uh, uh, two six zero one. No, no. It's the first. Give me the first three before the dot. First three. Oh, the first two. Is either. Is it, you know, oh, all the uh, all the numbers are separated by dots. So just oh, give me I, before the I dot. Know. Uh, your, I was saying the IPv6. Uh, the IPv4 is 192. 192 dot. 168. 168 dot. Zero. Dot zero. Zero seven. Dot seven. Okay. So let's do a search and let's see what we find here. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I got it correctly. I think I made a, made a mistake. Maybe if you uh, put the IPv6, it could work. You said 192.168.0.7? That's it. Okay, you know what? Do a Google, do a Google search and say, what's my IP? Like I use this website for my own and I saw my IP. So if you go to what is my IP address, it will tell you your IPv4 address. So do you see your, like right here, this is my IPv4. So what does it say about yours? Uh, uh, I found exactly the same page. So uh, the IPv4 on the page is 73. Okay. One four nine. Okay, one second. Seven three point one dot one four nine dot one seven seven dot one seven seven dot four seven. Dot four seven. Okay. So let me try this here. Let me put this in here. All right. So let's see if it tells us. So, so you're in Malden, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. So every IP address, wherever the IP address is, you can have an idea of where it's coming from, anywhere around the world. That's how IP addresses work. It's kind of like your house address. If you want to get a package to your house, we need to have the address so that we can locate where your house is. Whether it's here, whether it's in a different country, in a different state, it doesn't matter. 
So your the computer computers kind of work like how your postal service works. Without an address, there's no how. It's like without an address, you don't exist. You're homeless, right? So you need to have an address so that you can function. Stuff can come to you, and then you can also go to other places. If I say, Link, uh, I have $5,000 for you. Can you come to my house? And Link says, oh, yes. I'm coming right now. <laughs> Link says, I'm going to come right now. What's your address? I said, I don't know. Uh, just meet me under the tree. That, that tree there, the, the tree, the big tree, just meet me. Where is the tree? Where? <laughs> Right, that's confusing. So you need an address, okay? All right. So, so that's so I, I wanted to give us just a background in networking because we're going to need to have that information uh, while we keep going. And uh, actually, I, I would like to know that whether is it um, is it okay to share IP address with the others? Is it? Like a well, is it okay to share IPs? You can't share your IP. What are you going to do? Give somebody your IP and tell them to IP you? Like, can you IP me? It doesn't exist. Now, there are, there are criminals. Uh, can you guys mute yourself for a second? There are criminals who try to find your IP address so they can break into your computer. That is their job, right? To break into computers and try to find your IP address and try to get closer to your computer system. That's what criminals do, right? But your IP address um, is not something you want to share, right? Even if you share it, it is kind of protected by Comcast and Verizon or wherever you are in the world, your provider, right, never releases your actual address. It will tell us your geographical location, like your zip code, but your IP would never release your actual address. All right? And most people don't know, even know what an IP address is. They don't care. They just get on the internet. Right? Like if you ask somebody living in your house, uh, what's your IP address? They're going to say, what? Are you crazy? What is an IP address? Like, is that a new, um, is that a new kind of pizza or something? So, IP address. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, let's see what else we got. So, a network storage is a storage that is, you know, somewhere on a different device that you kind of connect to you can use a wire, right? You can use a, a cable or a wire to connect to it. Like, for example, this picture that we looked at, this picture here, all these guys, they all have internet cab Ethernet cables, right? If you look at their computers, that connects everybody. Am I correct? Yes. That is how you can connect to other computers and do your work using an Ethernet cable. Um, this cable is one of the most important cables in the world. I have a lot of it. I have a lot of it. I have a lot of the cables, pl plenty of the cables, right? All about the place. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, uh, Tayo, uh, yes, Sam? If, if I just want to connect two computers, my computer and your computer, and we're in the same office, we're sitting next to each other. And I, yes. I, I, I wouldn't do that, but I might, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would use an ethern, Ethernet cable, would I? Is that right? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Or if I wanted to absolutely. connect, if I wanted to connect my computer to the internet, uh, then you, could I use an ethernet? Connect an to ethernet? the internet, then you have a modem, right, that's given to you by your provider and your computer is connected with an Ethernet cable to that modem. Okay. Now, if you're using wireless, then you don't need the cable, you're just wireless, right? But the, cable, but the modem itself, right, is connected to Verizon or Comcast, right? 
Maybe if you look outside your, your, your building, you're going to see the wire. May, do you see your, the, you know, the, the connection? Right? When, when they come and install the modem in your house, they have to pull a cable, right, to your house and connect the modem. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's how it works. So if you're using wireless inside the house, then you don't need the cable. But the most stable connection is when you actually use a cable. So even your laptop, if your laptop is not very stable, just get a cable like this and connect it directly to your modem and your, your connection will be more stable, right? More stable than wireless. Okay, so you can certainly do that. Wires give you a more stable connection than wireless, right? Um, all right, so let's keep going here. Let's see what else we got. All right, so USB, right? Talking about USB, uh, let me see if I can show you guys something here. So if you look at your computer, you might see that some of the USB slots, uh, something like this. So let's see. USB. All right. Now you might see that the USB. Okay, this is a, this is a good this is a good one here. So some of your USB slots, right, might be a different color. <laughs> like some of them might be blue, and some might be black. Do you notice? Know look at your laptop or look at your computer, and see if you notice. Maybe some of the USBs are blue, and maybe some are just black. Anybody? Yes, I got the black. Yeah, black. Okay, anybody Anybody see the blue one? No. I got some blue ones in the back, but not all, not oh. all of them. Uh... Okay. All right, so uh, you're going to see some, like here, for example. All right, so let's see what that so let's see what it means when some of them are blue and some of them are not. All right, so right here it tells us about USB. We have different USB specifications, right? They are the different USB um should I say, well, specifications that do different things. They have different speeds. So, you have USB 1.1 all the way to 3.2 or even 3.3. And they, they move at different speeds. The, basically, the speed is when you connect the USB to your computer, how fast you move the data, right? Like you can copy files from your computer to your USB and back, right? The connection, the data connection um, from the USB to your device. So you have, so it's important to look at this chart here because they operate at different speeds. Uh, so right here, it says that if you look right here, it says super speed cables and connectors are all supposed to be colored blue because they are much faster. So when you want to connect your USB to your computer, if you connect to the blue part, you might get a faster transfer speed than the black part. Now you might not even notice because these things are so quick, you know, Maybe uh, you might not notice, but basically that's the whole idea that a super speed cable, it transfers five gigabits per second compared to the regular 12 megabits per second, right? Five gigabits per second compared to 12 megabits per second. All right. So those colors, right, those colors, means something, right? USB 3.1 ports. In fact, we have some that are red. I haven't personally seen a red one before, right? But you have some that are red, like real super, super speed. So you have some that are red, some that are blue, and some that are white, 
I haven't seen a red one yet, but it exists out there. All right? Okay. Now, you also have, we talked about this before, right? The hard drive connector, right? The hard drive connector, uh, the cable, the cable that connects um, to your hard drive. So right here, if you can see this, so this is the this is the hard drive, right? Right here. Uh, let me see. Right here, this connector it connects to the hard drive, and this is the hard drive in here, right? It connects to the hard drive. So that's what I mean there. The hard drive connector. All right, so it's called um, eSATA, uh, the hard drive connector, right? So it's an external, external SATA, external hard drive connector. Uh, it uses that same technology. It's like a newer technology. And if you look at your computer, you might notice the little description or markings on the computer. You can see right here, it says eSATA. So you know where to connect it. And this is your USB. It looks like a little like a little tree or a little branch or something right there. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. So FireWire and Thunderbolt, those are two uh, technologies that are, from, that are common to Apple computers, right? FireWire. So I think the FireWire... Oh, what did I put in there? Fire, wire, cable. So if you have a if you have a, a Apple computer like May, we know May has a computer because she told us your uh, Apple your Fire Wire might look something like this, if I'm correct. Yeah, it looks something like this here, and it says that it's mostly I think. Actually, wait a minute. Actually, um, so some printers, some printers have, I think I have the cable here. I have all kinds of cables. Some printers use that cable, you know, some of the Samsung or Brother or Epson printers might also use that cable. Uh, let's see what it says here um, in the book about the fire wire. Um, all right. Oh, well, actually, mm, let's see. So I says FireWire um, works with digital cameras, but also uh, hard drives. So not with, not with printers. I don't think with printers, but it's mostly unique with Apple. Also, you have the uh, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt uh, also has some, works with hard drives. So remember, this part here is about... Uh, this topic is about uh, external storage connectors, right? External connectors. So, so some of these uh, cables here they help you with external connections, um, you know, from different devices, different types of devices uh, to your computer. So mostly, when you look at the picture, it's going to tell you what it does, right? It will give you this kind of symbols. So you know what it's supposed to do. All right. Um, okay, so network connectors. We just talked about network connectors. So let's look at some names here. So let me do this again. So right here, this is the connector that I, I just showed us, or the cable. That cable connector is called an oh, RJ45. I know what is another name. RJ is register jack. Right? Register jack, exactly, right here. Register oh. jack 45, right? And the cables, <clears throat> excuse me, the cables have different categories. Different categories, uh, look at that there. Ethernet cables are sometimes uh, called cat category five, category six, right? So, 
So this cable is here, right? The very tip of it, this tip of it, right? It's called RJ45, right here. Just this connector part. The first time, long time ago, when I started working in IT, uh, my boss said to me, well, go and get us some RJ45s. Now, my boss doesn't explain anything to me. He just says, do this, and he expects you to figure out everything. So when he said RJ45, I thought to myself, wow, that must be like, like a lot of equipment. So he gave me the credit card and said, go and get us a bunch of RJ45. So when I get to, I go to Micro Center and I tell them, uh, I need to buy some RJ45. So how many? I said, maybe just one, maybe one RJ45. The guy said, you can't buy one. We sell like 12 or 24 or 30. I said, really? Show me. So he showed me this little thing. I said, oh, really? So this is what you call RJ45. Well, I never forgot since then. RJ45s, right? Um, if you look at the phone, if you have a, I don't know if anyone has a landline at home, right? We have a landline at home. If you have a landline, the cable is different. That is called an RJ11 on a telephone, right? On a telephone. But this here for the internet or ethernet, this is your RJ45. You're going to get a lot of questions about this cable in the exam, even the assignment, right? All right. So let's see what it says back there in the book. Okay, so, so it's basically used for networking, right? That cable, and there are different categories of the cable. Different categories. Um, in fact, if you look at uh, Cat Five uh, cable label, if you look at the cable very closely, um, for those people who do this kind of work a lot, you might see that on the cable. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. On the cable, you actually, it's written on the cable. I'm not seeing any here. Let me see. Somewhere, uh, somewhere here on the body of the cable, on the outer, or outer part of the cable, you might see uh, the categories that are written there so you know what kind of cable. Okay, well, here's an example. Okay, right here is an example. Uh, what am I doing? Right here, this says, this is a category 5e so you have the most common categories are category 5 5e and category 6 right most of the cables that you use at home or on the job are going to be category 5 5e or, or 6 right they're the most common categories for all the networking that we do all right okay so so the connector is called RJ45, um, and you know the cables are Cat5, Cat6, short for category. Ling? Yeah. Category, right? And this is the RJ45, right? Yeah. Uh, like I said, so so when you look at when you look at uh, at at your wall, maybe your wall. You might see, um, you know, the wall jack. The wall jack, uh, most times you can plug in a phone and a telephone. Sorry, you can, you can plug in, a, you know, maybe a telephone and a, you know, a telephone. And the one, one of it is for the telephone, the other is for data. All right. So in most workplaces, you're going to see the wall jack. Uh, one of it accepts your data, and the other one is your uh, voice, telephone, okay? So RJ45 and RJ11, right here, RJ11, RJ um, RJ45, okay? So register jack. 
Okay, so um, so, more, so some more networking options, um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, radio frequency, uh, they're very important wireless types of connections. So your phone, uh, you can, obviously you can work Bluetooth, some of these things, we do them already, right? Uh, your headphones might be Bluetooth. Your camera might be Bluetooth. Your car, right? Your car, I mean, in Massachusetts, it's against the law to hold your phone while driving, right? It's against the law now. So you've got to use your Bluetooth on your phone. Uh, you know, you've got to speak wirelessly on your phone. You can speak while you're driving, but it has to be hands-free. So most cars have Bluetooth technology. If you set it up, you can talk wirelessly into your car, you know, speakers and stuff like that. Um, all right. Now let's go on here, see a little bit more. So these are things we talked about before, input and output devices, right? Input and output devices. You have your keyboard, all right? Um, does anyone... Has, has, has anyone never seen a keyboard before? Should I show you a picture of a keyboard? Anybody? You want to see a picture of a keyboard? No. Lynn, Lynn, show us your keyboard. Uh -huh. Your keyboard. Yeah, how show can us I your show keyboard. You? <laughs> oh, okay. You have a laptop, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, anybody has an external keyboard? There you go. Alex is showing us his external keyboard. All right, so that's your keyboard. Um, all right, so everybody knows what the keyboard is. Uh, connecting your keyboard is pretty. Uh, Andrew, man, your, your volume is not good at all, so I can't even hear anything you're saying. I know you have an external keyboard. It's a laptop. Oh, it's a laptop. Okay. Arch? Laptop? No, I have. Okay. Oh, Arch has an external keyboard. You have to lift it up. A little bit more. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We see it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Angerman, your, your audio is not good at all. So you have to be muted. Okay, let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. So that's the keyboard. Uh, the connection of the keyboard is pretty straightforward. If you have a wireless, if you have a wireless keyboard, right, or a wireless mouse, right, um, you can connect it easily. All right, so here's something else. So this is on older computers, right? Older computers, I don't think this one has it. Older computers um, have what you call a PS2 port, right? PS2 port on older computers. Uh, so it kind of looks like this, where you plug the mouse and the keyboard, right? The mouse is green and the keyboard connection is purple. So this is an older keyboard, right? I mean, older, older um, computers. So if you have an older computer um, or you have an older mouse or you have an older keyboard, then you plug it into one of these connection uh, ports here. But most computers now are all USB uh, ports, right? USB ports. So that's a keyboard there. Uh, now, there's a word... Uh, let me tell you this word. It's a it's E R G O M I ergonomic. Um, May 
You know what this word? You know what this means? Uh, no, I don't have any idea. Or should I say healthy design uh, of computer devices, right? Computer devices, device. Oh, okay. So ergonomic design, well, er ergonomic, it's a very difficult word to pronounce. <laughs> Ergonomic uh, design. Basically, it's the design of computer devices or computer technology in a way that is healthy. For example, uh, let me say ergonomic. Ergonomic. Uh, let's say, for example, when you're buying, um, when you're looking at you know, let's say you want to buy a computer chair, right? Um, there is a specification of what kind of chair to buy for your own health, right? Actually, let me do this. So let's look at this picture, for example, right? Look at this picture here. This is a very bad way of sitting down at a computer, right? See this guy on the left? And this guy on the right, the, the chair is not, it's not ergonomically designed, right? So it's not a very good way to sit down at a computer. Um, so the whole idea of ergonomics is a healthy way of using computers, a healthy way of using computers. So you can see this picture here, right? This guy here has a better posture and this guy here well, it's going to have problems very soon. Uh, let's look at this. Actually, right here is another example. Okay, so this picture here, it gives us some specifications, right? Ergonomics. So people who do this kind of work, they have some recommendations, right? Your shoulders, your back, your arms, your thighs, your feet has to be at a certain angle when you're sitting down at your computer. So ergonomics is about a healthy way of using computers and computer related stuff. Also, you have ergonomic keyboards and ergonomic mouse. So I have an ergonomic mouse. I'm gonna show you my healthy mouse or healthy keyboard, right? Uh, here's my healthy mouse here. So here's my mouse, you see that mouse? This mouse here is pretty interesting because the mouse, it doesn't move at all. This is, this is what rolls the mouse, this right here, right? The mouse doesn't move. It's pretty heavy. It's a little bit heavy, right? Uh, and you can see all the different uh, buttons here. Okay, so let me show you. It's in the book. Uh, I think you might have seen it in the book already. It is right here. So an ergonomic mouse, where is it? Okay, so this is a regular mouse, but this is an ergonomic mouse here. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, right here. The mouse doesn't move because the constant movement of your mouse, right, sometimes might affect your wrist, right? It starts affecting your wrist. Your wrist might start getting affected, or your back starts getting affected, right? So, so all this, uh, all this kind of devices are designed in a way to keep you healthy, sort of, right? The way you sit down at a computer, the way you sit down at a computer, uh, ergonomic uh, keyboards and mouse. There are different examples there, right? You know, people. You know, people will sit down at the computer and they have back problems because of how you sit down at the computer, right? So ergonomics is the whole idea of a healthy design of computer devices. 
and how we use computer devices, right? Ergonomics. Okay, so so here is the ergonomic keyboard. Uh, the way it's designed, basically, right? Um, you know, that's just the whole idea right there. Okay, so your keyboard layout, sometimes your keyboard depends on what country you're in, right? Because the keyboards might have different characters, right? Different numbers, different um, symbols, depends on what country it is. So, you know, the keyboards in France, the keyboards in Germany or in England or in the United States here might look different because of the characters that are on the keyboard, right? Um, so not all keyboards are exactly the same. They're going to be different you know, based on where they are made and where they're going to be used because we all use different characters around the world, right? Um, and, you know, there are different settings that you can set up um, in your, on your computer. Like if you go to your control panel, for example, uh, we're going to round up Round, round this round this up very soon. Uh, key, if we just type keyboard, all right. So it will give you an idea. If you type keyboard or mouse or any of those things, right, it will show you the different settings, the different settings for your keyboard uh, or for your mouse. You know, there are different settings on your computer uh, for all those different. If I type mouse here, mouse, it will show me. You know, you can change the settings for your mouse. You can customize the mouse. You can change the you can change the pointer, right? Like the pointer. If I like my pointer on my mouse, if I my if I want to change my pointer to something crazy like this, right? I have to restart my computer, right, for it to take effect. Um, but you know, that's gonna that, that you can change all that stuff there. Okay, uh, let's see. So that's about the mouse. Uh, let's see a few more things here. Um, I think I should just go to, I think the last part is about printers, right? Printers. So printers on your computer, right? Your printer can be a local printer connected to your computer or a network printer. If you work in an office, right? If you work in a company, um, your printer might be one printer for the whole office, right? Just one printer for everybody. So that's not a that's right. not a local printer. That is a network printer. So everyone is able to connect to that printer, uh, maybe wirelessly or using cables. But that is networking, right? When you connect something to your computer directly, that is not networking. But when you use a internet cable or ethernet cable or like in an office, then that's a network printer. So a lot of people in an office can share a network printer, right? Um, if you have a local printer, only you can use it, right? Only one person can use that printer. But if you have a network printer, everyone in the office can use that network printer, but it has to be set up. It has to be set up by IT people who know what they're doing. So that's what this part is about. You have different printers. You have laser printers that print black and white. You have inkjet printers that print in color, right? Inkjet printers that print in color with CMYK. CMYK, uh, CN, magenta, yellow, and black right different kind of colors for different uh computers and of course if it's an older computer uh the cables are also different right the cables are different uh on older computers so i want you guys to kind of read uh you know just a little bit more of this part here it gives you the different names uh the old old cables for older printers are called parallel cable so when you read this, some of this part here, uh, it will give you, you know, like the details of what the different names are. All right. 
but the idea of networking is really important. It helps us do much, much more than if everything was just on your computer. With networking, we can do a lot more, connect to other people, connect to other devices, print, you know, print to one computer, I mean, to one printer in a whole large office and get much more done. All right. So, so you guys, you got to read this, uh, read the chapter, you know, and get yourselves familiar. If you have questions, when you come back to class, ask the questions, right? We can't look at every single line in the book, but if you have your own questions after reading it yourself, come back to class and ask those questions so that you can be clear on stuff, right? The end of the book, it gives us a summary, right? I know we're done, a summary of all the different connector types. So you want to familiarize yourself with them, right? Um, because these things are going to be important when it comes to the exam at the end of the course. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Let's do the attendance and let me know if you have any questions.